Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to discuss Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. This is a novel that came out in 1862, so it's a Victorian novel and in fact it's one of the most well-known examples of what's known as the sensation novel but we'll talk more about that later. This is going to be a fairly spoiler-free review, so I'm not going to go into great details about the plot. So all of you who are here to write a school essay about this, as there always are when I review classics, I'm afraid you might be a little disappointed. But if you want to know if this Victorian novel is something you might enjoy, maybe you'll get something more out of this video. So just to summarize the plot a little bit, this novel is all about the orderly family. And the orderly family consists of the head of the family, Sir Michael Audley, who is a man, I believe in his early 50s, who uh, has been a widower for most of his life, but has just gotten remarried to a beautiful and very young governess named Lucy. And she is the eponymous Lady Audley of Lady Audley's secret. So does she have a secret? What a question. Of course she has a secret. The other members of the family are Sir Robert's daughter from first marriage and her name is Alicia. Alicia is also quite young. In fact, she's about the same age as her stepmother whom she detests. So we have a very classic setup here. Stepdaughter detests her very young stepmother. Then there's also the cousin. My cat has a lot to say about the cousin. She hasn't even read the book. The cousin is a young man named Robert Audley and he is a very relaxed, easygoing, somewhat lazy, privileged young man who I believe is a barrister by trade but doesn't actually work as such. And this young man, Robert Audley, is practically the protagonist of the story. He meets a friend, an old school friend, named George Tallboys at the beginning of the book. George has just returned from a long stay in Australia, he has returned to England and runs into Robert, his old school friend. They meet, they catch up, uh, but something tragic befalls George and Robert, in an attempt to cheer him up, takes him to the family's estate. And while they are at the Audley estate, George, the friend, mysteriously disappears, plunging the plot into a mystery, into a search uh, to find out what exactly happened to this young man. So Robert wants to know what happened to his friend and he starts his investigation. Just to say that right at the beginning of this review, I really enjoyed this novel. I haven't been active on Goodreads for a while, but I would probably give this four out of five stars on Goodreads, meaning this is a book I can see myself rereading. I found it really fun to read, and that is not the case with all Victorian novels by any means. But this novel is very easy to read in terms of prose, in terms of language, in terms of how it draws you in. And I don't just mean easy to read for a Victorian novel, I mean genuinely just a fun read that I think you will also enjoy if you are not that into classics, if you uh, maybe struggle with Victorian literature in particular. I found the language of this to be quite modern, while well, obviously still very much of its time. The plot too is gripping from the start. This is not a short novel by any means, but it doesn't drag, it feels well paced, and it really sucks you into the story and you want to know what happens next. It's a page turner, which I perhaps shouldn't have been surprised by considering that it is one of the most well-known sensation novels. However, in reading classics, I have learned that what the Victorians found sensational doesn't necessarily apply to our modern sensibilities. But this one was quite gripping, fun to read. It made me want to continue reading it and a very easy read as well. Lady Audley's Secret has some of my favourite things about Victorian literature, like the sentimentality of it, um, like the focus on the domestic sphere, and in particular on the darker sides of the domestic sphere, something that uh, the more well-known novels by the Brontes, for example, examine quite well, the horrors of the house, of the family, the secrets that lie in the immediate surroundings that especially women find themselves in. 
I enjoyed the characters of this. They felt like um, like people. <laughs> and again, that seems like such an obvious thing to say about a book, but it's not the case in all Victorian literature and also it's not the case in all Victorian literature that I like. But in particular, Robert, the main character, I very much enjoyed as the protagonist of this. He's this easygoing young man who doesn't really take life too seriously. He doesn't take his friendship seriously, he doesn't take his relationship seriously, he certainly doesn't take his work seriously. And then he himself is kicked into action by the events of this book and he himself changes from the beginning to the end of the novel. The same can be said for the surrounding cast. There are layers to these characters, even characters who seem to be quite simple and straightforward uh, at the beginning of the book. Like for example, uh, Sir Michael's daughter Alicia. Her whole thing is that she is kind of in love with her cousin. Don't judge, this is the 1860s. And uh, he does not return her love and therefore she is filled with jealousy. That's her driving motivator. She's jealous of, uh, well, that, that he doesn't uh, return her affections. She's jealous of her father because he's found a, a wife that she detests. She's very spite-driven, but even in her character there are layers to it. Now, Lady Audley, who I can talk the least about without spoilering, and um, obviously is layers upon layers upon layers, and, uh, and the, the whole point of the book is to dig deeper into those layers to find out her secret or maybe even secrets. As I've already said, this is known as a sensation novel, uh, which is kind of meaningless to as, as modern readers. I think most of us, when we hear the word sensational, associate it with uh, celebrity drama or with soap opera. This really, to my modern eyes, read like a detective novel, like a mystery. Published in 1862, this is by no means one of the first detective novels. In fact, on this very channel I have already discussed a, a much earlier example from the 1810s, which you will find linked up, I'm just gonna say here. The genre at this point is not brand new, but it is still relatively new. And it is absolutely fascinating to see a glimpse of the tropes and conventions that would become so commonplace in the genre, especially in the stories around the turn of the 19th century, thinking about uh, you know things like the Sherlock Holmes stories and then later on Agatha Christie novels as well. So here, in Lady Audley's Secret, in this book from the 1860s, we see so many things that would later become staples of the genre, and I enjoyed those things a lot. Things like uh, mistaken identities, false assumptions, the deliberate collection and collation of evidence, uh, following trails, questioning witnesses, the sort of sneaky plot twist where the author tries and make you convinced that something is like that, but then actually turns out to be the complete opposite. I really can't go into any specific detail of this without spoiling the book, but if you are at all familiar with detective stories, then you will recognize those story tropes and those conventions, and uh, you will hopefully rejoice in them as much as I did. The downside of that is, because these tropes are so familiar to us, the modern reader, that there are very few true surprises in the plot of the book. There are plenty of twists and turns, but at least I saw most of them coming, and I am not a particularly perceptive reader by any means. So this might be something that a contemporary reader of the 1860s will have been completely blown away by the twists and reveals in the book, but a modern reader from the 21st century might find them a bit less sensational. However, that did not take away my enjoyment of the story at all, not even a tiny bit. I absolutely loved it, even when I saw a plot twist coming from three chapters away, when the reveal happened, I was still... Oh, just because of how gripping the, the story is written, just because the prose really takes you along, so you feel through the character's shock and surprise, you kind of feel a little bit of that as well, even though you are a cynical uh, reader, well-versed with detective novel tropes. I want to talk about one of those tropes in more detail, and that's my favorite in this book, and that is the unwilling detective. 
you know the trope where someone is drawn into becoming an investigator just because there is something that they can't let go of something that's gripping them about a particular case and we have that here and that's why I enjoyed the character of Robert Audley so much because at the beginning of the book he is uh, described as a very lazy, easygoing, enjoys life and also doesn't pay too much attention to the things around him. He is described as the sort of person who's turned his private lodgings into a sort of menagerie because he just keeps adopting um, dogs from the street and he has this collection of songbirds in a cage which is obviously so Victorian. Everyone likes him but no one expects particularly great things of him and he just sort of drifts away living his life enjoying his life until the disappearance of his friend and that really kicks him into action and uh, he is by trade a lawyer as I've mentioned so he has got the skills and the knowledge to follow through with this investigation so his sort of detective skills don't come out of nowhere they they are explained in the book it makes perfect sense why he would be so good at this sort of I want to say lateral thinking that's not quite it I meant analytical thinking, deductive thinking, the Sherlock Holmesness of it all. Uh, he, he jumps into that role and he inhabits it and uh, there are several points in the book where you see his inner dialogue and he doesn't enjoy doing what he's doing but he feels compelled to. He cannot stop before the end of the investigation even though he knows that Lady Audley's secret might well tear his family apart. I love that. I ate it up. Uh, his entire motivation and his character I found so delicious to read about. Uh, the other, the, the counterpart to his character is of course Lady Audley and she is mysterious and she is also loved by everyone including the main character to begin with. Uh, well everyone except for her stepdaughter who detests her because the so she is a worthy subject. His investigation doesn't feel trite. You know, it feels like there is something to investigate and he's going to get to the bottom of it, but she won't make it easy for him. She is shut off. She's keeping her secrets close to her chest and it's going to take a damn good detective to get to the bottom of those. I really enjoyed the relationships between the characters. Possibly the flattest of the characters, the least interesting one, is in fact the father of the family, Sir Michael Audley. He um, is very influenced by those around him, um, both by his wife, his daughter and his nephew. And he kind of does not have a lot of agency in the story, but that didn't bother me enough that it knocked my enjoyment of this book. Something that surprised me was actually the humor in it. It is funny in many parts. I mean actually laugh out loud funny. I feel like the Victorians have this very understated type of humor in their novels. If you ever see like Victorians trying to be funny, I feel like a lot of the time that misses the mark for a modern humor, but this sort of casual understated humor I, I really enjoyed. The book kind of doesn't take itself too seriously. You know, it's very well aware of being sensational. It's very well aware of being over the top, very camp in some ways, and it revels in that. And that just makes it such a joy to read. So I can highly recommend Lady Audley's Secret if you've ever been curious about a 1860s sensation novel or if you are a fan of classic detective fiction. It's so fun to get to, not the origins, but the very early timeline of this genre and see how those tropes and conventions uh, were used in this context. So if any of this sounds appealing to you, do pick it up. It's not a short novel, but it certainly feels shorter than it is. As always, let me know what you think in the comments, if you've read it, and if not, if, uh, if you're going to pick it up. And to those few school kids still watching, I'm so sorry, there was absolutely nothing useful in here for your school essay. If you have the time, actually go and read the book and I think you'll like it. Thank you for watching. Bye!